What if you are a single man? How, how are we to think about this as single men? Uh, I'll, I'll just, I don't want to, because if you're a single man, you're going, well, I don't have a wife. And um, if you're a single man, you're like, well, I'm not an elder. And so how, how would I practice your definition of manhood if, um, if I don't have a wife and aren't an elder at the church? Okay. A single man images headship. He doesn't have it as much as he images headship with a borrowed authority. Single men have no authority over any woman in this congregation unless they are your young daughter or you are an elder in this church. By being male, that does not give you some intrinsic authority over any other woman. It doesn't work that way. But as a single man, you image headship with borrowed authority by serving and protecting women as sisters. So let me unpack that. I've got an older sister and a younger sister. And here was a frequent conversation that my daddy had with me. Buddy, at school, you look out for your sisters. And if some other guy is messing with your sisters, I want you to tell a teacher, if that teacher will not listen, I want you to punch them in their face and keep punching and keep punching and keep punching until an adult drags you off of that little boy. And when they drag you off, what I want you to do is like, get off me, get off me. All right. And you go back at them until they like, there needs to be a healthy kind of fear of you when it comes to your sisters, you protect them. Now, let me say this. Zero authority over my sisters. Zero. Like I could not come home and go, Stephanie, clean my room. Headship. All right? That's not going to work. Because my daddy would have wore me out. Like I'm not, in the gen, I'm not in the timeout generation, right? I did not grow up in that day. We got to go think about stuff. I was in that day where you just got beat down. And so there was no consider your actions, mister. That just didn't exist. And so if I tried to exercise authority over my sisters, things would go bad. But I was charged by my earthly father to protect them, to serve them. And single men image headship by protecting women as sisters, serving women as sisters. And then here's a second one we'll need to talk about just briefly. Single men image headship with borrowed authority by seriously pursuing godly women to marry unless has one, one has the call or the gift of singleness. So if you're a single man in any of our campuses and you're like, I've got the call of singleness. Don't think God wants me to get married. I'm going to use all the time that I have to serve the Lord and to push back darkness in the world. Praise God. But if you don't have that gift, and I have not met but maybe one brother in 30 years of ministry, they would say, I've got the gift of singleness. So if you do not have the gift of singleness, then you image headship by seriously pursuing godly women in a friendship relationship in the hopes that that friendship will lead to marriage in which you might partner with this woman in gospel ministry and for raising children that love and worship Christ. And to not do that is to be outside the bounds of what God has called you to in purpose and design around manhood. Headship is worked out in the home primarily. Not in the apartment with a group of dudes, but in a home with a wife. And what's happened is our culture has discipled our young single men in an over-sexualized, over-romanticized way that has led to all sorts of destruction in the marital relationship, all sorts of destruction in the family unit, because we have not seen what I'm looking for is a dear friend who I might partner with for the glory of Christ, because that kind of marriage holds together. 